Desert plants can only grow when the conditions are right, and that may be only for a few short periods in the year. So many desert plants take a long time to reach full size. That agave there, for example, is over 40 years old. But during that time, it has manufactured food and gathered water and stored them in its great fat leaves. But it's not yet adult. This one is. This agave has started to withdraw that water and food from its leaves, so now they're beginning to crumple and wilt. And it uses that food to fuel the growth of this huge mast-like stem that grows from its center and will carry the flowers. And it reaches its full height at extraordinary speed. It can grow by a quarter of a meter every day. It reaches such a height that here in Kew's glass house, panes have to be removed from the roof to let it through. This infrequency of flowering has given this species of agave a nickname, the century. So, why does the agave produce this huge, tall mast? Well, some plants are pollinated by insects, and you attract insects with smell. But this plant is pollinated by birds, hummingbirds. And birds have little or no sense of smell. To attract them, you have to exploit their very sharp sight. You have to produce flowers that are very bright and put them right at the top of a prominent, tall, must. Growing at such a rate demands considerable effort. For the agave, it's terminal. The act of producing that mast is the last act in this plant's life. Having done it and been pollinated, it dies. Thanks to their extraordinary survival strategies, desert plants are able to thrive in places where others would die. But that makes them the focus of much unwanted attention. There's a downside to success for a desert plant. The more water it stores, the more tempting it is for a thirsty animal to try and steal it. So desert plants have to have good defenses. The techniques they use can tell us something about the herbivores that try to feed on them. This Echinopsis from Argentina develops long, strong spines as a defense against large grazing animals, llamas. But such defenses also provide hiding places where an insect or a spider can keep out of harm's way. There are other ways in which a plant can protect itself. You can disguise yourself so that you become virtually invisible. As these stone plants have done, these are not pebbles, as you might think. They are living plants. These are lithops from the deserts of Africa, and their markings closely match their surroundings. And what's more, they vary in color according to the rocks on which they grow. That's growing pale rocks, and those on reddish rocks. Or you can load the water you contain with a particularly strong chemical, which animals might find distasteful. This is the peyote plant from Mexico, and its sap not only puts off animals, but has the property of suppressing pain. So the local people use it for that purpose, and also in their religious rituals, for it's also hallucinogenic. Oh. 